Welcome to another edition of The Local Show here on Grassroots Community Network. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. I'm Eric Scarvin, your host. And thank you, our YouTube and Facebook audience, for joining us each week where we feature inspirational locals here out of Aspen, Colorado. So excited, so honored, and I think just already heartwarmed to welcome back a friend and a guest. She's been on the show once, and I was just so struck by her story this last summer. I want to welcome back the founder and CEO of Haiti Children. It's Susie Kraybacher and her dog, Stroke. <laughs> That's S-T-R-O-G-E. Like Stroganoff, Stroke. Short for, short for Stroganoff. <laughs> Stroke's in the house. And we're just going to say, Stroke me, Stroke me. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't resist, but he's such a little cutie. And I got my dog, Luna, under the under the desk right now. <laughs> she's chill. I think she's just starting into a nap. Is that funny? Do you know these older really? girls? They need like a nap they do. sometimes. They, you know? And I can relate at my like, age too. <laughs> I, you should be happy that I didn't bring his little stuffed animal because he's oh. learning to do things that we don't want to see on television with his oh. stuff. <laughs> oh, oh, it's getting a little edgy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to both of you, and uh, thanks so much for being here. And you were recently in Haiti, and we have so much to talk about. But I wanted to start it with something really light. And, you know, we live in Aspen, and we're midwinter now, just about midwinter. And what are a couple of fun things, like, you've had uh, enjoyed in Aspen? I know you've been kind of traveling, but just some fun, maybe, activities you've you enjoyed, know, like winter I, activities? I finally found a pair of cross-country ski boots yesterday. Oh, good. Um, I've been looking since December, and Whoa. I couldn't find – they're sold out. Because equipment everywhere. is so hard to find with COVID. Well, exactly. I crazy. went to the golf course, and, uh, and the very sweet lady there – um, said, Susie, we've been sold out since December. And I'm like, please tell me you can find, just please, I know you have to have one pair somewhere. She's like, <laughs> aren't you the girl that works in Haiti? And I'm like, yes, oh. can you please help me? Get the, she, get the inside line, hopefully. She found, thank the Lord, a pair, and that's what I'm going to be doing to, you know, stress release. I love to cross-country ski and snowshoe okay. and hike with my five little ones. Um, but that, yeah, my dogs are kind of my world here. But you, you let me in on, on a secret. You have 23 dogs in total? I actually have so 28 here and, in total. 28 in total. We have five here and then um, 23 in Haiti. Oh, my gosh. And it's a, Eric, if I told you the story of how we got those dogs, I'd, it's a long story. There are many, many stories <laughs> to tell. Um, because you've, you know, you're, you're involved with these kids in Haiti, you know, um, animal rescue, all this kind of stuff going on. Yeah. It started um, with just ch child rescue, but I believe children should have a dog. Yeah. And with 119 children, 23 dogs is really not that much. <laughs> right. Well, if you put it that way. Yes. You know. Yes. That's only like a one dog for every like five or six yeah. kids. So, so you it's know, reasonable. That's, that's totally reasonable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're still under 30 dogs total. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and we we actually have our own vet. So Okay, well, well that helps. For. Yeah. And yeah. you've got a lot of other animals too, which we'll, which we'll touch on, but before we take our first break, I want to just, you know, capsulize your story because we did tell a pretty good um, background story when we had you on the show in the summer. But you've got a really fascinating background, um, you know. Can you just kind of, um, kind of briefly tell people kind of some of the highlights and sure. you know landing in Aspen, uh, being a part of that? Yeah. Well, I, I started. My heart for children came from the fact I think that I was a foster child, yeah. and I was um, a severely abused, and it was very difficult to find placement for me, and. Adoption just wasn't, you know, wasn't, I didn't get adopted. Um, so at 15, I'd been in three foster homes, and um, most of them were great. But in my heart, I just knew that it was a hard way to survive. And um, my, my brother did not get placed in foster care and ended up killing himself. So I promised God that if you help me survive, because there were often times that I didn't want to, but if you help me survive, I will. I promise I'll dedicate my life to helping kids. I promise you I'll do that. And um, you know, my road went all over the place without a lot of um, 
uh, adult supervision. I ended up in a lot of different situations. Um, I worked for Playboy for about 10 years. Um, came to Aspen uh, in 1986 and met my husband here, who um, was actually my divorce attorney. So um, he came into my life, and we just didn't have, um, it wasn't our goal to have a family, but <laughs> I went um, to Haiti one year after really thinking, you know, you forgot your promise to God. What are you doing with your life? Right. You're going to lunch every day, going to the gym. You're, you know, you spend more time on your nails and hair than you probably have ever spent in prayer. And I think that you need to honor that promise. So I went to Haiti, and I, it was like something clicked. Yeah. I did not have a high school education, but I knew. I don't know if anybody watching has ha ever had this holy spirit epiphany moment where you're not afraid of anything you know you can do it wow. and you're like this is for me yeah. this was only for me for nobody else and i have no fear wow. about this mission it's your god-given purpose totally and you feel that in your heart totally and then once you have that kind of that recognition and you're feeling so purposeful it's like the road's out in front of you, right? right. And you know where you need to go. Mm -hmm. And now it's just like, and even, and there are a lot of obstacles. And we'll, we'll talk about that in the main body of the show. But you, you have that vision now. Yeah. You have that avenue. And it wasn't learned. It was something that just came into my heart and said, wow. if you don't have the question. And back then, we really didn't have, you, know, you couldn't just go online and research. But I knew if I made friends with people who I admired, who were doing huge things, then some of it would rub off on me. Yeah. And, you know, maybe maybe I could learn by watching. It was probably the first time in my whole life that I actually took advice and <laughs> listened more than ever. Boy, it's so, so powerful, you know, so something just, yeah. That switch, the light, the light switch yeah. uh, turned on, and you you recognize that mission. And Susie, we're going to take a quick break, rehydrate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Maybe Strogue needs a little uh, <laughs> sip of water too. Luna, how mm -hmm. about you? She's already mm -hmm. napping. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. Our only one of the show. I want to thank our winter underwriters for making shows like this possible. Mm -hmm. Klug Properties and Chris Klug, White River Overland and Scott Vold, Picking County Landfill and Kathy Hall, and Sundog Athletics and me. And my former dog, Sundog. <laughs> we'll go to a quick break, guys. We'll be right back. We've got Susie Kraybacher, founder and CEO of Haiti Children. Get up to speed on the latest news and how you can get involved. So don't go away. We're back here on the local show with Susie and Strogue in the house. He's got a he's got a little um, personality, doesn't he? Yes, he's... he has a lazy eye too. Oh, okay. Because he was a rescue dog. Right. When I got him, um, <laughs> he was underdeveloped. Oh my gosh! Of course, <laughs> of course. there's got to be something. I mean, it can't be like a healthy <laughs> dog that's like woof no. woof. Let's go. It's so I, <laughs> I bought an incubator and I raised him in an incubator and oh he got addicted to oxygen. Oh my God. And that, therefore, the lazy eye. <laughs> you got to go out and have a drink sometime because, I mean, it was sitting here. I could just to. listen to your stories <laughs> all day long. There's so many of them. Uh, but we've got a really good one here with Haiti Children and your orphanage. Now almost. Almost 200 kids? Do you have a total we of have, 100? We have 119 that are actually okay. Kraybachers. You know, that they're okay. all, we, they are our children. Oh, you've officially adopted them? Well, we're, we're their legal guardian. Okay, okay. And we have 700, 750 students. Okay. And then we have wow. about 8,000 people every month that we give medical care to. Wow, uh, that's Either huge. medical care or uh, they're in our feeding program. So we, we're working in a very 
very, I mean, when people think of Haiti, they think it's poor, but there are areas that are destitute, and yeah. that's where we work. We work in some of the toughest slums that there are in the world. Um, and we have, we just finished our third well in an area that has absolutely no water. So with, you know, the water programs, the, the, um, the uh, feeding programs, the, our widows programs, you know, there's a lot of um, elderly people in the area who, you know, might be 100 years old and can't walk to get their water, so we have, you know, programs for them. Okay. So, yeah, about 8,000 people a month. That's amazing. This just came, kind of came to mind as we're sitting here in Aspen, one of the wealthiest places on the planet, yes. and then you go down to Haiti, which is known, like you said, to be you know, pretty destitute and poor and impoverished, and then they get these hurricanes and everything else going on. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of like thoughts on, <laughs> you know, kind of like going from like this riches to rags, yes. basically. Yes. And then you go back and forth, like you're traveling back and I'm forth. Back and forth through the year. Six... Like, what's that like, I guess? You with... know, I, I figured out how to do it for me, how to make it work for me. And, um, a lot of my friends don't really understand my mood swings. Yeah, right. Well, this is why. Um, exactly. You know, I go to Haiti, and I never know when it's, is this the last time I'm going to see you, you know, because a lot of our kids are terminally ill, and um, it's also a very dangerous place. So I, I don't take for granted anymore that, seriously, this might be the last time we see each other. And um, like night before last, one of my kids sent me a video on WhatsApp of shooting in the area. And he's like, Mom, I'm afraid. And I'm like, just don't go out. Don't go out. Stay put. Yeah. And, you know, then there's the process of making all the phone calls to the directors. You know, do you know there's shooting in this area? Please, you know, have everybody stay in. And tomorrow morning, leave for work at 4 a.m to get there at 8 a.m. because you want to avoid the shooting. We kind of know, um, you know, from experience when there's going to be less shooting. So it's, in the beginning, I feel like I had post-traumatic stress at times because there's nothing like seeing a child die in front of you. There's nothing like seeing a person shot in front of you unless you've been to war it's kind of hard to imagine yeah but it happens and we've lost hundreds of little kids over the last 27 years and it's like we were talking before it's because i chose to work with very sick kids yeah. and you cannot save them all but every time one of them passes i also have to not think about just myself but they're brothers and sisters. Yeah. We just lost one of my children, Jean Michel, two weeks ago, and I flew to Haiti for the funeral. And the kids, you know, I'm trying to explain to them, you know, Jean Michel was sick. He was very, very sick. And we knew when he was a baby that he was probably not going to live as long as us. And that's okay because his purpose now is finished here on earth. And we, we got the privilege and honor to be his family. But they still, they're little kids, and they get afraid yeah. of ghosts, yeah. and they, they, want, they don't want to sleep in the room where his bed is. And we have a child psychologist simply to deal with these issues because we do lose children. We've yeah. got one little boy now who he has AIDS, and um, he's very, very healthy right now. But we know that there might come a time that he succumbs to that. Yeah. And then we have children with heart, um, you know, de degenerative heart issues. We have children, right now I have one in the hospital who was born with partial intestines. And, you know, there's, I, I never know. I think that we've saved them and then I'll get a call yeah, at right. 4 a.m. And when the phone rings during, you know, the weekend or early mornings, I wake up Joe and I'm like, this can't be good. Yeah, what's this? Yeah. So, exactly. and then I'm on a plane because the kids need support. The child psychologist has really been a blessing to us because the kids, first of all, were abandoned 
and thrown away. Not one of the kids that we have was given to us in a nice circumstance. Every single one was found in a box or in a tin or thrown away at the edge of the river. Um, wow. You know, so they've got issues already. Yeah. And it sometimes can take, it's like, you know, your dog is a rescue dog. These kids are rescue kids. Yeah. And we shower them with love. We have so many supporters out there who have been a lifeline. And with COVID, we've learned new ways to um, make our donors feel that they're very close to the children, that they have relationships with the children. It's kind of like, you know, we're doing this live. Well, now we have internet at the orphanage. We can do Zoom meetings. Um, I can actually watch the kids when they're in school. Nice. And I can see the employees and, um, you know, it's, it's so a family. So that virtual interaction you can do it's online. It's been amazing. Yeah, you know, huge. the kids are seeing their, I don't know why we didn't think of it before, but before I could take people to Haiti. Now we yeah. kind of have to go where our supporters are so that they don't forget about us. Right, right. Well, COVID spurred on so many different things and, and maybe some improvements some uh, more connectivity, yeah. interaction. It was a blessing in that way yeah. because we decided we're not going to let our donors forget us. Right. You know, these are lives here and, yeah. you know, they can, we can't be forgotten. We need you people. <laughs> well, there's, there's, um, you interact with these kids in so many different ways, like a mom, you know, you're basically their mom. And yeah. the only thing I can compare it to is when my mom was a den mother, you know, when we were Cub Scouts, <laughs> she had like 12 boys. That's not quite like having, you know, <laughs> hundreds or thousands of, uh, you know, individuals, but we've got a great video. Thanks to yes. you guys that shows some of the interaction you have with the kids. That's uh, years and years of, it's a the compilation years. of, from the earthquake okay. uh, in 2010. Right, earthquakes, I forgot about that too. Yeah. They got all that stuff. Mm -hmm. let's, let's, uh, let's toss to the video and we'll come back in just a minute. It is so amazing the interaction um, that you have with these kids, and we also have some great images we're going to bring up. And what's like your favorite? Like, if you could like like sit down with a group, and I I don't know how this kind of works because there's so many kids there. But like when you're doing like activities, what are your, some of your favorite activities you like to do with the kids? Um, the kids love to tease me relentlessly, <laughs> especially the teenagers, and um, and you know the. 
the thing is this, it's like they love sitting in a circle and okay. asking me about, you know, you guys, like what my friends, what do I like to do for fun? Oh, like a question and answer. They, it, yeah, of. it's yeah. exactly like that. But then in return, I get to ask them anything I want to ask. Ah. So like it's only fair. It's a lot of <laughs> oh yeah, that part they hate. They, <laughs> what mom, you don't get to ask us questions. What mom doesn't know will not hurt her. <laughs> and on this last trip, so I understand a lot of Creole, but I never told them that I do because I didn't want them to know. So. So they oh, think which is their native that's language. That's their language. Like, okay, that's their language. That. So on this last trip, I'm sitting there eating, and uh, I'm listening to their conversation. They're like, well, you ask her, you ask her. No, you ask her. No, you ask her. I'm like, you know, listening. And they're like, well, if she says no, then you just need to, to ask Daddy, because then Daddy will say yes. Oh, the he soft, always Mr. Says soft it. touch, huh? Yes. So <laughs> that for that reason... Um, my husband ended up when you're t when you turn 14 at the orphanage, you can have a cell phone okay. because they um, cell phones are cheap in Haiti and they're in a dangerous place. So I want to know yeah. where they are so I For can for safety keep purposes alone. GPS yeah. track them yeah. and you know because I don't keep them sequestered all the time behind the walls in the safety of the armed guards and the orphanage they have to go out and have you know a life okay. so this way I can keep track of them they don't know that but <laughs> they um, they all get once they start when they turn 14 they get a cell phone I said no and they called dad and he said yes so <laughs> working the like, angles I'll tell totally, you. Totally. Now what happens when they turn 18 and well, they, when they turn 14 and they get the responsibility of having a cell phone, they also get the responsibility of having chores. So each child oh, nice. has a list of chores that they do every day, and they get an allowance. I like it's it. It's not a very big allowance compared to what we would give to a child here, but it's substantial in Haiti. Yeah. And they don't actually get to keep that allowance. It goes into their bank account. Okay. And Nice. In Haiti, they can't touch their bank account till they're 18. Okay. So when our children age out and they turn 18, they get their bank book, and they get it's it's about three three years worth of rent that they wow. have in their pocket. What a great head and start! And if they want to go to university, we have an incredible family who gives scholarships to them. So they get to go to university if they wish. If not, then they've been trained very well in vocations. By the time they leave us, right. they, they're, they're almost all great public speakers. They're just, I mean, they, they speak in church. They speak in front of 500 people on the mountaintops when we have our seminars. Wow. Um, you know, they have, they, they read and speak. Almost all of the kids speak at least three languages and can play at least one instrument. That's incredible. So you really equip these kids yep. on pretty much every front. Yep. You know, you guys are raising livestock, you're educating them, you're giving them, like, basically the tools for life, right? And the ones that want, you know, I really encourage diplomacy with the kids because I told them if I die and don't have one of you become president, <laughs> then I will just as soon go to hell because you've ruined my life. <laughs> put, put that on them, right? A little pressure. No pressure, you guys. So they, I've taken groups of them to Washington to speak to senators wow. and congressmen wow. and walk the halls of Congress and be, you know, learn the respect of how um, debates happen. So they're, they're prepared. So, so Susie, we're already out. I can't oh, believe it, but no. we're out of time. But did you have part and gifts? That's a good you news. Do. So, but how can people get involved? HaitiChildren.org is the okay. website, okay. and you know, I like I love taking people to Haiti. I um, know that it's a difficult time now to go, yeah. but we can always connect you to children and our activities via you know online uh, okay. internet. Sounds great. Did you have fun on the show today? You know, I, it just isn't long enough. I know. We'll have to, we'll have to work towards a one-hour special <laughs> next time. And Strog looks like he's pretty relaxed. Aww. I hope you guys had fun this week on The Local Show. Thanks for joining us, guys.